Hello, this is Shoyan, a Japanese carpenter. Today, I'd like to install a wooden deck which will be 2 meters wide and 4 meters long. The overall material will be Japanese cypress. Let's get started. First, let's process the wood that will be used for the deck board. The deck board has a width of 45 mm and a length of 120 mm. The deck board will be placed in the direction of the 4 meters, but it won't be attached to the building this time, so I will cut this a little shorter. The deck board is called two ken in Japanese. When we say two ken, it has weight. It'll be moved easily if I use a lever on the stand. But when I move it stand by stand, it's quite heavy. Now I'm going to plane it by a planer. The deck board is long, so it's warped a lot. It was cut as much as possible, but it can be straightened once or twice. Chamfer is the surface of deck board. This deck board is in my front. So, I'll chamfer it first while moving. Next, I'll do our marking on the framework. This horizontal material will serve as the beam of the framework and that its back will be facing below. And the front part will be covered from above. Maybe you can't imagine the shape even if you see it being marked. But maybe you can if you see it being assembled. The material is of course Japanese cypress. It is 105mm square lumber. Also, I'll use the same 105mm square lumber for the supporting materials called joists and the deck post. In that way, there is no loss. 105mm square lumber framework is also 4 meters, so I'll cut it in half roughly. Align the four and mark them together. Make sure that both ends of the material do not have nags. Then line them up and cut them up at once using Omaru saw. A hazard core that I have never seen has appeared in the cut end. It looks like it's filled with something that is rotten in the middle. But it's just in the middle of the cut tree. It's rare. Cut the supporting materials or the called joists of the deck board. One end of the material will be inserted to the back part beam from above, and the other one will be inserted from below of the front beam. I will make tenons at the opposite ends of the joists. Also, make cuts on the beam. It will do the opposite work of the tenons I made earlier, when the other end of the joist will be inserted from the above and the other end from below. It's hard to carve from scratch with a chisel, so carve roughly with Mizokiri.
cut the material for the deck post. The earth floor, which is made of concrete, has slopes, so I will cut the post in the sloped part shorter. I will check the length and the actual size on site and will cut it. I will cut the material of the deck. Since I only chamfered the surface earlier, I will cut it with a length of 4mm. The portions that I cut 4mm will be attached to the place with 3 sloped parts. Because the wall was finished by spraying, cut about 4mm so as not to damage it. By shortening it, the water drainage will be good and the deck board will less likely to rot. Finally, I will finish the visible part of the framework and deck board with an electric plane. It's outside, so I'll finish with an electric plane. After replacing the blade of the electric plane, it will be finished very beautifully. I had the paint applied at the site the day before. The framework is dark, and the deck board is finished in a light clear color. Now I'll assemble it. I'll use a plastic deck post temporarily. It is a screw type, and the height can be adjusted freely. It's perfect for being a temporary deck post. It could have been perfect. But the plastic deck post was sandwiched. It will not come off when it hits the base strainer. So now I change my mind. I'll support the front side by a wooden post. The front beam hits the base strainer. So I'll cut it a little. This wooden deck will not be attached to the building. I will just attach it on the concrete. But even if a typhoon comes, it will not be blown away because it's located in a place where the wind doesn't hit. I think that this will prevent the water to penetrate in the building and make it easier even when replacing it. Now, I'll insert the joists. Insert the back from the top and the front from the bottom. The reason for doing this is because I want to move the deck post about 40 centimeters inside. I will move a little inside like this and stand it up. By doing so, there is no sense of discomfort when viewed from the front. Even if you hang around when you sit down, your feet will not hit to the post. You can see the bottom lightly and I think it's cool. Measure the length of the deck post and put it in. Put the foundation footings in the part of the deck post that was cut earlier because of slopes. Foundation footing is a packing that is inserted between the foundation and the base. It's made of reinforced plastic. I'll put 120mm square lumber to this. This has a hole so that the screw can be drilled from the back. I'll install this wooden deck horizontally, so it will not have slopes. Also, it is not in the video. I had it confirmed with a laser machine. I also had it confirmed from the sash from four corners, and after that, I'll put in the center deck post. It's not fixed to the building, so it's difficult to measure the post. When one becomes longer, the other one floats and it will be difficult.
Now framework has been completed. Remove dirt cleanly and allocate the deck board. Originally it was a sign and the width was decided, but I will mark it again here. And before putting the deck board, I will fill the hole made when I drove in the screw with caulk. I can't see it, but if it gets soaked in water and it accumulates, it can be a cause for rotting. In deciding how to arrange the deck board, I decide freely. Line up the deck board. If I don't install it carefully, the wall will be damaged. Because of that, put a veneer board on the wall side. That way, it won't get scratched and the gaps will be constant. Mark with a chalk line and make a pilot hole. Make sure that the nail does not pass through. If it passes through, water will enter from there. So make a hole in the extent to which nails do not pass through. Use 90mm stainless steel round head nails. At first, I only drill one to decide the interval. Later, I would drill it one by one from the back. The reason for using an impact driver before hitting a nail is that the weather is nice, but the caps below are dark and I can't see it. I'm looking into the markings with the help of the lights from the impact driver. The impact driver has as many as 3 lights and it's bright. It's perfect to use in situations like this. Decide the interval on the opposite side. I will not drive in the nails fully so that I can determine the interval. If I drive in first, I will not be able to remove the deck board if something goes wrong or is scratched. I won't drive it deeply until I decide exactly and think it's fine. Then look at the hole and decide the hole interval. I didn't mark it in the middle, but I will decide the interval with my eyes. Then after deciding the interval and looking at the hole, all I have to do is drive in the head of the nail. Wipe up the traces of the chalk line well. It remains a little noticeable even if it is painted. Stainless steel round hand nails on clear finished cypress wood. It's elegant and beautiful. 
The installation of wooden deck totally made out of Japanese cypress is completed. Also, the ship is simple, the height is just right, and it seems easy to use. That's all for today. Thank you for watching.